everybody in this Discord thread. Since it seems like there's been a lot of renewed interest around the Mozilla Hubs API, I wanted to give the briefest and quickest of introductions uh, to how to begin fiddling around with that with your Hubs Cloud or Hub subscription. Um, there, I have not personally implemented anything with the API in a more formal way, but hopefully this will give you the tools to be able to just begin to hack around. So there are a few steps to get set up. Um, here's the documentation on the server API, but I'm going to walk us through the actual steps. I'm going to be working with my personal Hub subscription to, to show off, but you can do this with your Hubs Cloud or with your uh, own subscription as well. So the first thing you want to go do is go to the admin panel of your deployment and scroll all the way down to the bottom of app settings and features to where it says public access API or public API access and you want to enable that and make sure that's saved. Next, you'll want to go to your URL forward slash tokens and it should bring you to a page that looks a little bit like this. For today, I'm just going to work with um, I'm just going to be working with uh, a user token, but you can also create an application token. So I'm going to select both read and write rooms, and then at the very top, you see your token type. I'm just doing account token for today. Great, and it will give you this API. I'm going to revoke this right after, so don't try and do anything weird to my deployment. Great, I'm going to copy that. Next, uh, if we look at this documentation, you're going to go to your Hubs Cloud host forward slash API forward slash v2 underscore alpha forward slash graph IQL. Now, this is a handy interface that's going to let us actually do some testing with uh, the API. Um, if we go back to the documentation, there's also an example workspace that's very helpful. So I'm actually going to quickly download that. I'm going to save page as. Great, so I've downloaded that. I'm going to go back to Graph IQL. And then over here on the right, uh, the fourth button from the top says Open Workspace. I'm going to click that and select the JSON file that I just downloaded. And we'll see at the top, we have a number of tabs that have been populated for us. Right now, just focus on the ones that say user, and then we have queries, create rooms, and update rooms. So kind of the uh, everything except delete from the CRUD actions that you can use. So let's start with just querying the rooms that are available. So uh, I'm going to go there, and there are a few things I need to do. First, I need to clear out the old authorization. So I'm going to delete that old authorization and then go to headers. I'm going to add and I'm going to type in authorization in the name. And then for value, I'm going to write bearer space and then paste my API token. When I click that, I should see it populated over here on the right. Next, um, we'll see that this is currently trying to target hubs.local. We're not going to want to, you're going to want to replace that with whatever uh, host name you're using. So I'm going to copy right there and paste that in as well. Great. Um, with that, we have a pre populated command here to just kind of look for my rooms and then return favorite rooms. Um, what else? Public rooms. And it should just give me all of my rooms as well. So when we run that, we should be able to see, yes, um, we have my rooms, which is the full list of rooms that I've created. We have public rooms, which is the ones I've enabled. And then favorite rooms is empty right now. I haven't favorited any rooms on mine. So that's just querying uh, existing ones. Now, more fun stuff and what a lot of y'all are asking questions about is more around creating rooms. So quickly, I'm going to repeat my actions here to get set up in this workspace. Yeah. I need to recopy my token and I've lost it. I am going to pause this right here while I grab that token again. Okay, I'm back. I just went and grabbed a new token. So I'm going to go back to adding my authorization. 
and then change my ho host up here. Great. And let's look a little bit at this action. Right now, the uh, default workspace has allowed promotion. Let's go ahead and just delete that. It's going to return an error if we keep it. But we can see we're going to create a room with the name Hello World, three exclamation marks. Um, this will be the description. It doesn't have a scene ID right now, so it's going to load in as a blank space. And then we want it to have flying enabled and spawn emojis enabled. Um, so let's go ahead and run that. It looks like it was successful. And what we're looking for is this little ID. This is what we're going to use to actually go in and access it. So I'm going to first copy my URL up here, open a new, a new tab. I'm going to just go to my base URL. And then I'm going to copy that ID and paste it right here. Now this should load up, and we can see in the very top of the tab, hello world, three exclamation marks. If we go to the room info and settings, we see the room description is correct, and then create uh, emoji and allow flying are already in there as well. So great, we've created a new room. Let's quickly update it. I'm gonna go back to our graph IQL, and in the tabs, I'm gonna do user update room. I'm going to do the same process of making sure that I'm using the correct to, uh, header here. I'm going to change my host name. Right. And then uh, we want to make sure that we're ta targeting that same room URL ID. So I'm going to go back here and make sure that I copy that specific one. And that's the first thing that we need to make sure we edit here. Um, it comes pre-populated with an old room ID. It won't work if we, we try and use that. So I'm going to re-replace that with the correct ID. And maybe I'm just going to change the name to I have updated this room. And once again, just get rid of um, the allow promotion and uh, for now, let's not worry about changing the scene ID. Let's keep the scene ID as null. Um, flying is going to change, but the main thing we'll look for is that name change. So I'm going to press go, and we can already see in the tab. And then at the very bottom, you should see, I think my face is in the way, you should see a presence log message that says the API changed the name of the room to I have updated this room. Awesome. So that is just a good way to get started with using the API. Looking down here, you can see that um, if you want to do it more programmatically or with Postman or some service like that, you can just send those get and post requests to that forward slash API forward slash v2 underscore alpha. Um, once again, I hope you'll try and connect and reach out with some of the other folks who have done some cool work with the API. Um, but hopefully this is uh, enough to get you started just manipulating and seeing what you can do uh, through that. All right. Please message me if you have any questions.